today we're going to be building a wagon. A wagon that my wife will be using. She uh, helps out doing the landscaping on the property. So her only request was make sure I could hold four of these buckets for water and dirt. So this is drawn out to be able to hold four of these. So first step was the blueprint because I am restricted by the way I bend stuff and everything is going to be built off of that. So obviously the first step was to bend some tube. You all know how to bend tube. This is one inch uh, aluminum tubing. Give it a nice safe edge so you're not, as a child, to sit in it. I would love to be able to tell you that I only had a certain amount of material, but I did screw this up. But it is a wagon. It's not going to go 200 miles an hour. So we can get away with having an extra weld. It'll be okay. We don't like to waste material on it here. So that's the first step. Now moving on. Clearly next step is to weld this up. Uh, we're going to tack it up, do our thing, make sure you wear your heat sleeves and gloves and all the common sense stuff because uh, I don't know anything about you, but burnt skin ain't on my list of cool things to do in the day. So now that we got this all welded up, this is technically going to be something we're going to trace onto this piece of paper to make a template. This will be the footprint of the bed of the wagon. Uh, we'll cut this out and use it as a template to draw the aluminum. Looking good and straight. So then this is where this will wind up living. We moved into the steel side of the business. Uh, this is three quarter, eighth inch wall. I kind of scaled it down a little bit. We don't need to be one inch box tubing. It's only a little wagon carrying a couple buckets of dirt. So we don't need to go crazy. And I feel like the scaling of the size of the material down just, just fits the idea. So we've got the cross spring beams. We're gonna take it over to the MIG table. We're gonna MIG all this up. And then this will be our uh, basically upside down foundation to build the suspension off of. So we'll figure out how the steering works and the rear axle and everything gets placed. So. But, let's do some MIG welding. So we've transferred everything over to this table. Where everything is clamped down, got the magnets in place, um, we can start doing some MIG welding. But, as you can see, I only have so many magnets, so what we're going to do is tack everything in place, transfer the magnets over to these two struts, tack them in place. So when I actually get down to uh, MIG welding, I'm only going to do three of the four sides, because I want to keep the one side uh, flat without any grinding. It's not carrying thousands of pounds, so it'll be okay. Uh, so when we fasten it to the bottom of the aluminum tub, there's no obstructions. I am drilling holes in these tabs right now, and these are what we're going to weld to the frame in the four corners and one in the middle uh, to bolt the tub of the wagon to the frame. We're going to locate all our mounting tabs. They'll all be in the corner. We'll clamp each one down, tack it, fully weld it up. I got the Miller Matic set a little bit hotter this time because this is eighth inch material. That's three eighths plate. Uh, I'll just go to a, two more clicks up. I think I'm in the eight range, quarter quarter range. Uh, I definitely like the auto settings on that because it's like it takes the thought out of it, you know. All right, as you can see, this is one of four of the pieces we need to fill in the corner gaps with. Not a complex piece, just put it in the slip roller. I'd say do each corner individually, uh, maybe just tack each one in place just in case a lot of heat welding in that corner could, you know, obviously make this rock. Uh, just a piece of poster board, made a template. Uh, it was obviously a little oversized, so I just fit it. It's always easier to have too much material and sand it down than it is to have not enough and a huge gap. Uh, we've got the four corners already welded in. It's definitely made this thing a brick. It's solid as heck now, uh, not flimsy. So it's got five holes already in it. Those are matched up to the steel frame. And so I've already countersunk each hole. I'm gonna use these 10 mm washers, they're stainless, uh, and they adapt for our countersunk bolt. So I didn't want a button head or a hex head bolt sticking up. Axles are 25 inches wide, 
Uh, and the reason for that is to set the wheels out kind of where the front will need to match. So obviously this is the magic number for the rear axle. Because the, it's gonna sit up against the bearing here, I didn't want to weld this directly here because then it's tapered and it would mess this up. I'd wanted a flat surface up against there. So I did some uh, like rosette holes. So obviously I'm gonna push this in to about here and with them countersunk, you, you're making sure you get a very good penetrating weld on it and four of them obviously you have a, just a good guarantee that you're locking this in. Whatever I do back here, I have to do up front, but it also has to be uh, enough to clear the, the, uh, the frame rails here. So what we're going to do is we're going to weld all this, tack everything up, put the uh, front diagonal to obviously support this because it's so far, um, so high up. When you put the wheel on, I want to move. So we'll have a strut that'll go in place also. And we will tack that in also. So we'll get everything tacked up and we'll get it welded and then the rear will be done. You'll be able to push the wheels on as you can see. The threaded inserts, they're already uh, welded in place so that's done and it's all centered up. So the next step, steering knuckles. The goal is to TIG weld this up. It's a tight area so I wanted to TIG weld, keep it nice and clean. And it's partially visible so, you know, have the nice welds on it. Pretty much ready to MIG weld, put some heat to it. Back to MIG welding, going back and forth, it's great. So we'll tack this all up. Then make it up, uh, and then we'll work on connecting the steering. So when you're actually pulling it, you can actually steer it as well. So as you can see, I have a poster board template of a bracket that's going to go right in here, where it actually can't go too far forward where it touches the wheel, but not far enough back where it hits the frame too soon. Because you don't need it to go all the way forward like a drift car, but you definitely don't want to have enough, as much steering as a top fuel car. So that's where about this is the happy medium right now. So with this, I'm probably going to go draw it out, cut it out of like eighth inch plate, drill this hole, and tack everything in place as we go because you don't want to weld something permanent and go, oh, well, that stops too soon or that doesn't work. There you go. And that is plenty of steering for what we're using it for. It's not a drift trike or anything like that. So. That works. Uh, the last thing we need to do is just weld the brackets in here to the spindles, make sure that's all done. And then we can bolt all this stuff together. But also, before we flip this over, because I now know because of how much steering I have, that I can put the 45 uh, support brace in there just to give this a little more rigidity. Uh, being so tall, being six inches tall like that, I don't want it to flex or anything. So when we get done with welding that part in, we can actually flip this bad boy over and attach the wagon to the frame. So the last thing we have to fabricate is a handle. Alright, as you can tell, the wagon is now complete. Tug the wagon, nice and sturdy. Nice safe edge. Corners came up pretty good. Uh, plenty of distance between the wheels and the bottom of the wagon, like during steering. Which also came out pretty good. Nice stout handle. Got the Delron grips. It's not 4,000 degrees when it's direct sunlight when my wife's out doing the landscaping. Came out with this idea last minute. A little clip that you use to hang your brooms up on the wall. 